Johnny, I love you to death, brother. You are one of my favorite people. You, I always said this, man. You, if you could take you and Pinball Clemens, mold you guys together, and <laughs> blast you across the world, we would all be happy because you two are the happiest people that I know. And throw in Alan Doyle too, man, if you want to. Also, man, like happy people. Who, who always give back in so many different ways. Man, I am so glad to see you and talk to you because, like I said, it's been way too long. Thank you, Rudy. I, it's been a long time, man, but it's good It's good to see your face. Oh, same here, man. You look good, man. How have you been holding up for the last couple of years, especially with the pandemic going on? Man, I've been good, you know. It's the same as, I think the same as everybody in the world, you know. Unprecedented times, uh, you know, ask for unprecedented responses, you know. Uh, so it, it took a, it took probably four or five months for me to actually realize that I was indeed not gonna be able to stand on a stage for a while. You know that was that was that was tough. Uh, after 20, 27 years, I basically been able to go up and sing whenever I wanted. Uh, I was being told that I was not allowed to. So that took a wee bit of time, you know. Uh, but but you know, out of every storm. You know, comes a rainbow, and, and the rainbow for me was that I had extra time to spend with the kids and uh, Jen and be at home and, you know, catch up on a lot of things that has been had been asking for my attention, but I was unable to, you know, get my attention. Uh, and then, you know, being able to take the time to really sit down and write songs and reflect on what I was going through, reflect where I've been, where I find myself, where I hope to go. Uh, and before I knew it, you know, I had myself a new album, you know, that I wasn't really planning on that either. Uh, but it was uh, it was one of these things that happened and I sent it to the record label and and they, uh, they were thrilled that uh, I was, you know, that I was able to put it together. So what is it about you, man, being able to touch on people's emotions? Um, you can write a song about yourself and somehow it connects with everybody. What is that magic you have? Well, I, you know, I, I, I'm not exactly sure, but I, I think it's because I've always, uh, I've never really seen myself as anybody but myself, you know. Um, I always say that it was, it's easy to make a living being yourself, you know. I, I, can't, I can't imagine trying to be something that I'm not, you know. And uh, I'm just, you know, I'm the, I'm an immigrant that, that you know, the, the son of a diesel mechanic and, you uh, that's the people that I relate with, you know, hardworking people. And luckily for me, uh, there's a whole bunch of them out there that can relate to things that I relate to, you know, things that I like to focus on, you know, family and friendship and, and love. And, uh, you know, just try and stay, stay focused on the positive side of things, you know. Uh, that's, that's really been the key. That's been the, the key ingredient for anything that I've ever done is just to try and be, you know, try and be some sort of a light. You know, or uh, the voice uh, for people that want to say something but but might not really know how to say it. You know, I'm just curious about one thing though. You know, a lot of us have during this pandemic maybe learned something that they never knew about before. I know for me, just doing these Zoom interviews. If somebody said to me two or three years ago, "Yeah, you're doing a Zoom," I'm like, "What the hell?" and figuring it out. And that's kind of like something that I learned. What's probably something that you have never done before that maybe you learned during the pandemic whether it be cooking would it be sewing i well, mean yeah I, I talked to one guy who said he never sewed before and he learned how to sew <laughs> well i never sewed uh i realized that i you know i reconfirmed that i'm a terrible cook you know <laughs> uh I, you know i'll burn water if you leave it uh, if you leave it to me uh you know i, I think the, the biggest lesson for me was was to slow, you know, the time that, that, you know, I've always valued time, you know, time is something I've always valued, but, uh, mm -hmm. but I don't think, I think that this whole, this whole pandemic really allowed me the opportunity to not only value time, but to value what I did, you know, what I do during that time, you know, how I, how I, how I spend my time, you know, uh, you know, I think that was one of the biggest lessons that I learned, you know, um, to be in the moment, you know, to like whatever my feet are that day, whatever, you know, wherever I'm like here, you know, to make sure that, that I'm speaking to you, that I'm, I'm not looking around and, and looking at what else is there or what's coming or like, I'm looking at you, I'm, I'm focusing on, on what I am up to in that moment. 
and to value the moments that uh, that I've been given. I think that's probably, you know, maybe the one of the biggest lessons I've learned, you know. And, uh, you know, I learned how to power wash a bit better. You know, I, I, you know my, my house is sparkling, Rudy. It's like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, what else, man? I'm, you know, I, I produced, uh, you know, I worked on a, a reggae uh, album uh, that just got nominated for a Grammy. Uh, so I produced a, a record with a guy named Gramps Morgan, which yes. was awesome. So that was really fun, man. That was like that was something I never expected, you know. Scottish Canadian guy producing a reggae record, you know. Uh, that was fun. Uh, I uh, what else did I do? Uh, uh, associate producer on a a, a, a movie uh, that had uh, it was called the movie's called Dangerous, and uh, so I wrote the theme song. Uh, and sang the theme song at the closing credits and then uh, was lucky enough to be a, an associate producer on that. So uh, that was way, which, which by the way, I should add, the, mm -hmm. the biggest part of that was that Mel Gibson was in the movie. So I get to tell all my relatives that I produced a movie with William Wallace, you know. <laughs> I love it, man. I'm just curious, are you going to be in LA for the uh, Grammys because of this? So I am not. Uh, the album, the album is what was nominated, um, yeah. and uh, Gramps is obviously going to be there, and I'm actually going to be in the middle of rehearsals uh, during that time. But, mm. but you know, I'm, again, I, I'm, I have always been, I have always taken a lot of pride in, in being part of something bigger than myself, you know, and uh, everything I approach in life, even even my own career, you know, like to. To think that I'm the reason for everything that's happened in my career, I, I, it's crazy. You know, the, there's so many people involved, so many people that uh, put on a lot of hard work. And, uh, you know, it's, it's I think remaining humble and, and remaining uh, grateful and uh, just just being thrilled and uh, that you get a chance to take take all these things you've been given, man, and, and share them with people, you know, like that's... That's a, that's a good lesson. You know, that's a good lesson to learn. And, and I learned that lesson years and years ago. So, And you're definitely doing that for us, uh, kicking off 2022. You got a tour, my friend, and this is a tour about love. What's the tour called? And what are we going to be seeing and hearing in this tour, man? Well, this tour is something that I've wanted to do for, honestly, really like 18 years. Uh, I've, I've wanted to be able to go back into some of the smaller communities uh, you know, for the past, I'd say, 10 years, 11 years, you know, when we, we go on tour, we go on tour with, you know, all these buses and, and trailers and tractors and people. And, and, you know, you're never able to go to the smaller venues because the smaller venues, first of all, they can't, they, you know, they're, they're unable to house the equipment. And secondly, you just can't sell enough tickets. Uh, there's not enough seats in there to cover the cost of the show. You know, so it's, you know, it's just logistically impossible to do that. So for a long time, I've been telling people, everybody around me has heard me talking about this for a long time. And that is, hey, what if I just, what if I just grab my guitar and, and just go and instead of people coming to me, why don't I go to them? You know, and every, wow, well, you could never do that. You know, it'd take too much time and you'd be away from home and it would be, and I thought to myself, you know, I need to reconnect with people. You know, that's, I feel like, I feel like, I know we have Zoom and I know we have all these, you know, ways to connect, but but nothing beats, nothing beats being able to be with somebody. You know what I mean? Feel that energy, right? And uh, so I, I, I put this tour together um, and it's going to be five and a half months on the road, a uh, hundred and something shows. And I'm going to go play all the places that I've always wanted to play, but I never could play, you know, because of the size. So, you know, I've been able to go into some of these small communities and actually sit down and tell a few stories and sing a few songs and share the new album. And then also, uh, you know, take a wee intermission maybe and come back with all the, the stuff that I've done in the past and, you know, just have a, a chance to make some memories with people, you know. You know, I want people to understand this, too, because um, when you do a show like this, your show, of course, which kicks off in London, may be done this way. But the next show could be completely different because, as you said, 
stripped down. You're telling stories. So people should realize, yeah, I got to go to this show, but maybe I want to go to this other show too because it may not be exactly the same. And whatever right. happened in one show may not happen in another show. Those are the cool things about shows like this. Yeah, and, and having the chance to, you know, having a chance to spend with, you know, I mean, I'm just going to go out there by myself. I, you know, bring maybe a, a couple of musicians that have been with me for a long time, you know. Maybe bring in different musicians for different nights. I don't even know. Maybe have a few guests pop up with me, you know. And exactly. I mean, that's that's the magic. Yeah, uh, that's the magic really of live music is you know being able to sit up there and you know usually I'm covered up with a lot. Of, I mean, like last tour we had 14 people on stage. You know, um, you know it's a lot of it's a lot of stuff. You know, so the opposite of that is being able to just go on stage with a, a single light bulb and just sit down and play songs the way I wrote them, you know? And that's, I think that's going to be a magical evening. I think that's going to be a night to remember, a, a night for the people that are going to come see it. But uh, selfishly, uh, you know, it's going to be really special for me to be able to sit down and uh, sing these songs and tell the stories of how they came around. And, um, you know, just one-on-one -on -one with a small, a small intimate audience. It's going to be special for us too. You kind of mentioned about an album when do we think this album could be coming out? The album is already out, really. It's so out. yeah, it's it's been it's it's awesome, man. Cause it was one of these things where usually you have these you know these big like ah, new album, you know. Yeah. Uh, this album was really cool. It was just kind of like it was just kind of slid slid into the uh, the repertoire and and you know the people that have found it and the response has been, I mean, the response has been like no other to be honest. Um, and I, I think it's a lot today with the approach, you know, the acoustic, it's an acoustically driven album, you know. Uh, it was recorded in two days, start to finish. Uh, it was live off the floor, you know. Uh, great musicians, incredible musicians. Uh, and just, uh, and, and I, I believe some of the best, uh, you know, as far as, uh, you know, the songs that I've released, the most personal, uh, very, very sort of deep songs, uh, if you will, you know, in comparison to what I may have released in, in the past. So I'm excited to let people hear it. What's the album called? It's called Love Someone. Oh, sweet. Yeah, so it's uh, Johnny Reed, Love Someone. Uh, the title track of the song, uh, the title track of the album is a song that it was a call to action, if you will, you know. It was, uh, you know, take some time, love someone. Yeah, you know it's uh, put your the 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 chorus is roll your windows down, feel the sun, take some time and love someone. You, you know? know, Johnny, like I said, you and I have known each other for a long time. I'd say probably like twenty years plus. Yes, probably. yes. You know, and I know the kind of guy you are, the heart that you have. What was it like for you emotionally to see the things that you saw in the last two years? We talked about COVID, but. I mean, there was a lot of things going on with racism. There was a lot of things going on in the U.S. and in Canada, too. The things that we saw with uh, the discovery of the uh, graves of the uh, indigenous children. Um, you know, the fact that you can turn on your social media, the term Karen is understood what that means. And uh, Kevin, when a person like you sees these things, what does that do to your heart? Well, you know, really, I, sometimes I don't know what to believe, if, you know, to tell you the truth. You know, I, you know, I turn on one station, it's telling me one thing. You know, I turn on another station, it's telling me another thing. You know, it's, um, it's kind of like when somebody, you know, when you, when somebody talks about somebody else, you know, like you bump into a guy and, and hey, do you know, I don't know, you know, Charlie Smith? It's like, no, I don't. Man, he's, you know, he's an idiot. I hate him. And it's like, well, I've never experienced Charlie Smith. I've never met the man, so yeah. it's hard for me. It's it's hard for me to, you know, come up with a, you know, my my judgment. I, not that I'm here to judge, but I can't really talk about that, you know, because I never met the man. Versus, you know, and then you meet somebody else and head, you know, Charlie. Oh man, he's amazing. He's the best guy I ever met. You know, so I, I feel the same with a lot of what's been happening in the news. Uh, I try to turn off the news, man, and just sort of talk to people and communicate with people and and, and really, um, like, for instance, 
through the years, I've done a lot of work with indigenous uh, communities, you know. Uh, I've had the great fortune of seeing a lot of places that I never, a lot of people might never see, you know. Um, I've had incredible spiritual, you know, experiences uh, with indigenous communities. Uh, the, you know, for Kuchawak, the Inuit, uh, you know, uh, a guy named Charlie Watt took me fishing, you know. Uh, you know, Charlie's amazing. Uh, you know, you have no idea how it affects it's how it affects me is one thing, but how it affects the actual people that that this that experienced this and had family members that experienced this. Unless unless you actually sit down and, and take the time to speak to people, man, and, and really, you know, you can feel the pain in that. You know, you can feel the. Mm -hmm. You can feel how that made generations feel. You know how that feels. Not only, um, it's 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 tough, man. It's a it was a, a very tough time, and this is something that people have been experiencing for for centuries. And and you know, will it end one day? Uh, geez, I don't know, man. You know, I think the world just keeps keeps spinning. Uh, you know, as far as the Black Lives Matter, I have, as you know, I, I have. Uh, you know, a lot of people in my in my world, man, that uh, have a very personal connection to that. You know, they experience experience uh, racism and on a daily basis. You know, um, so I have my feelings on that as well. You know, because I've witnessed it. You know, uh, I've witnessed I've witnessed the uh, let's call it the difference. You know, yeah. uh, I've been in airports when. I've walked through security and my backup singers just keep getting, you know, every airport, you know, uh, you know, what do they call it? You know, when they, they say you've been, you've been selected, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. We know, you know, yeah. uh, I've, I've witnessed that for, for a long, long time, you know? Uh, so, you know, I've got my feelings on all that stuff, I've got personal feelings on all that stuff, but, um, uh, I try. I try my best to have conversations with people, really, and, and really, uh, really get to get as close to the heart of the matter as, as possible. It's been tough, you know. It's been, been a tough go here the past few years. I think uh, a lot of things have been revealed to us as a people, you know. Yeah. And uh, sometimes the hardest thing today is look at yourself in the mirror. Absolutely, you know? you're and, absolutely and I, right. And I think a lot. Of, I think a lot of people have been forced to look at themselves in the mirror whether it be countries or cultures or individuals, you know, and uh, if you don't like what you see, man, you got to fix it, you know? Damn right. And your music helps that a lot. It really yeah, does. Well, your music and your show. Man, I, that's, I, I try, mate. I mean, I mean, that's my, you know, that's my voice. You know, we're all given voices in different ways. My voice is an opportunity to speak about, to celebrate difference. I mean, I, I think that's the, that's the key, you know, is to celebrate difference. I don't know if you remember, your listeners might remember this, but when I first came to Canada, they had this thing in Brampton called Carabram. Yeah. Man. Yeah. It was amazing. Uh, one night in Brampton, you could jump in these buses, man. You could go to the Croatia Pavilion, the German Pavilion, the Jamaican Pavilion, the Newfoundland Pavilion, the, you know. And and I, I remember getting a phone call for a good friend of mine and in Scotland, and he said, man, what's it like? What's Canada like? And I never forget my answer. I said, it's the only place I've ever been that celebrates difference. And uh, and my, my hope is, is that, you know, we as a, a country can continue to do that. We can celebrate each other. I don't think, I don't think anybody wants everybody to be the same. That would be kind of boring. Yeah. But we can celebrate difference. I you know, you know I hope they bring that back because when I was a kid that used to be around Toronto and you had the passport where you would go and they would stamp the passport going to each pavilion it was a blast it, it was, was awesome, something that, that you did in the summertime I, it was wicked yeah yeah they need to bring that back man look yeah. before we go because of uh going with you know going into 2022 what's your advice on this because when we were in 2019, people were just like, I need to get the hell out of 2019. I need to get to 2020. We got to 2020. 2020 to me was worse than 2019. We got to 2021 because that's what people wanted to do. We're still getting the hard waves hitting in there. But, you know, 
Not as bad as 2020. People are already like, 2022, yeah, yeah. Experience to me says, chill. Just because the ball drops doesn't mean things immediately change. From your experience, what advice can you give folks out there who are anxious for 2022 to be the year of change? Well, I think that, I think arguably 2019, 2020, and 2021 were the biggest years of change for a lot of reasons, you know? Um, you know, I, I mean, I'm not any psychologist, Rudy, really, or, you know, I'm a guy that writes songs and sings them, and I'm a dad and a husband and a son, a brother. Um, if I had any advice to give anybody, if I was giving my, even my kids advice, I would be just to, hey, you know, we're all going to we're all going to the same place, and we're all going to get there someday. Yeah. You know, we, you know, slow, you know, cool your jets, man. Slow down a wee bit. You know, um, before all this happened, one of the biggest things that I that I saw is that I had a lot of dear friends of mine that were chasing this uh, the golden ring. You know, they were uh, everybody was everybody was chasing, chasing, chasing. You know, it was like, I'm going to get there. And, and no one really knew where they were going. They were just, they had this idea that they wanted to be famous and rich and wealthy and all this stuff that, that frankly, I've, I've yet to see anybody get there that's happy, you know. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel like if, if there was any advice for, for anybody out there, it would just be slow your roll, you know. Enjoy enjoy the time, you know. Uh, We've, we've learned what we miss during this time, you know. We've learned the, that we, we missed our relatives, you know. We, we miss wrapping our arms around people we love, you know. So wrap your arms around people you love, you know. Uh, you miss seeing your friends. Yeah. Go see your friends, you know. You miss, uh, you know, family events. Have a few family events, you know. Uh, be good to yourself. You know, and uh, make sure you're even better to others. You know, these these would be. I think these are the things. Some of the things that we've learned during this this crazy time, and and hopefully, as anything in life, we we can learn for uh, learn 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 some lessons along the ways. You know what I'm saying? So. Amen. Amen to that, brother. Like I said, I got big love and big respect for you. Thank you so yeah, much man. for this interview. Thank you for kicking off 2022 in a positive way with you out there doing what you do best, man. Perform for audiences with great music. All the best to your family. And, Thanks, Rudy. You know, what you talked about, the hug, I'm hoping, man, I'm going to give you the hug. Cross fingers you're at the Junos this year, man, because then I could give you the hug then because of being in Yeah, Toronto. man. Well, I'll be, uh, I'll definitely, listen, I'm going to be in, uh, I believe the show. I believe the tour stops in in Brampton at the Rose Theatre in Brampton. Yes, it does. And I believe it's stopping at the um, the Art Centre, the Mississauga. You know the yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The I check Art it, man. Center there in Mississauga, Living Arts, the Living Arts Centre. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm I'm pretty close to you. So if, if you're kicking around, are you uh, kidding me? Man? It's about 15, 20 minutes away from me, man. So that should work for me. Well, man, there you go. Hey, you got a chance. Maybe you got a chance to say a quick hello. There you go, man. Like I said, big love to you, and thank you so much. Thanks, Rudy. Bye, man.